welcome to Life as a Cancer Survivor. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through what it's like to participate in Fight Colorectal Cancer's Climb for a Cure and talk with you about why exactly I do it. In case you happen to be new here, my name is Jelena, and in May of 2016, I was diagnosed with stage three rectal cancer. I started this channel to talk about the details of what it's actually like to go through cancer treatment and also talk about how life just doesn't return back to normal once treatment is over. I found out about the climb about three years ago, uh, right as I was finishing up my last rounds of chemotherapy. That year, they were climbing Mount Democrat, Mount Cameron, and Mount Lincoln, uh, which are three 14,000 foot mountains in Colorado, and they were only like two hours away from our house. There was the option to just climb Mount Democrat, which was gonna be about a four mile round trip hike, or you could summit all three of the mountains and that would be about a seven plus mile hike. I thought that doing the four mile hike would be a good challenge for me because the climb was happening just shy of two months after my ileostomy reversal surgery. Doing the climb would be a huge middle finger to cancer and would show it that although it had weakened me, it didn't break me. I met some awesome people on the climb and some amazing women survivors. We pushed each other after climbing the first mountain to attempt to summit the next two. We cheered each other on and motivated each other to push our bodies to see just how far that we could actually hike. I ended up summiting all three mountains and hiked over seven miles that day, a feat that I never imagined that I could have done after what my body had been through that previous year. I've done the climb every year since 2017 and each year I meet more and more amazing survivors, advocates, and caregivers. Because of COVID-19 this year, uh, the climb is being done virtually. But in keeping tradition with the climb um, summiting a mountain in Colorado, uh, my family and I were going to be hiking Mount Sneffels, which is a 14er on the western portion of Colorado. My husband John and I tried summiting Mount Sneffels last summer. But because of a lingering foot injury, I think that contributed to me having some major foot cramps on the hike. So that paired with the potential of some stormy weather on the horizon, we decided to cut the hike short and we didn't make it to the top. This year we're going back so that we can show the mountain that I can get to the top and we're bringing our daughter Mayel with us too. So let's get started with the climb. So I'm in my basement getting ready for the climb for a cure. The night before we start the hike on Saturday, we're going to be camping at the trailhead. So then we just have to wake up and get going because the hike we're taking, it's about six hours from our house. Um, and the cats want to help. So <laughs> uh, I'm going to go through just the basics of the stuff that we're taking with us supply wise. So we've got our six person tent, which is nice and roomy for a family of three because it'll be myself, my husband John, and our daughter Mayel. A little two-person tent in case the campsite is a little too small and we need to do the smaller one and then I'll sleep in the car. We have sleeping bags. I'm always freezing when we go camping and especially at 11,000 feet-ish it's tough to stay warm at night because it's probably going to be about 40 something degrees. So we've got a queen-size air mattress that my husband and I sleep on to help keep us warm because the last time we slept on that air mattress it was freezing. Uh, we've got the emergency blanket that I'm going to put down on top of the air mattress after it's aired up, then put the egg crate as insulation on top of that, and then the fitted flannel sheet on top of that, so then hopefully we won't hear the crinkling of the emergency blanket. Um, and in case that's not quite enough, a uh, friend let us borrow their tent heater so we can run that right before we go to bed just to warm up the tent before we fall asleep and then in the morning when it's really cold and you have to change we can turn that on to kind of warm up the tent so we're not frozen before we get started. Uh, we also have sleeping pads. Um, Mayel would sleep on the bare ground but we have the little sleeping pad um, but the air mattress is going to kind of double as a sleeping pad as well. Uh, the route that we're doing for our climb, the hike we're doing, it is a class three hike, which means there's going to be some rock scrambling. So to be safe, we are going to be taking helmets and we'll be wearing those. Um, it won't be any 
hardcore climbing that needs ropes or anything. Uh, but since they'll be scrambling, there's the risk of small rocks or large rocks falling, so we want to protect our heads. My husband and I both have day packs that we'll be taking with large water uh, bladders. We've got headlamps because we will be starting early in the morning and then at night for camping. Uh, we wear the headlamps around to find our way to and from the bathroom and stuff. Uh, we also, I've got a pot here so we can heat up our dinner. Uh, we've got a stew that I made tonight that will reheat trekking poles. Uh, our daughter Mael, she's nine, she loves using the trekking poles and it keeps her occupied and keeps her going for a little longer. And then finally, inside my husband's pack, we've got the first aid kit, all the essentials that you need when you're out hiking. Um, he just has that pack always in there so we don't have to worry about that and then sunscreen as well and so those are the basics to get us through the night for camping i'll talk about what we're going to wear and all that up next so clothing wise uh john and i attempted this mountain last summer it was in august so the temperature is going to be about the same um, so i'm wearing about exactly the same thing because i was comfortable then and i know that that clothing is going to be fine so um pair of athletic-y underwear, so non-cotton. Um, two, since I'm a CRC survivor and it's always a good idea to have an extra pair of underwear. Sports bra, I have a pair of just like athletic legging pants, a short sleeve shirt and a long sleeve shirt. I have wool socks. Uh, they go over the calf, almost to the knee. I wear those on top of the leggings, and then of course I've got my Klein swag, bracelet, hat. Um, cotton is rotten, or cotton kills are two phrases that are common when hiking in mountains. You don't want to wear cotton because when it gets wet, it gets really heavy and it doesn't dry quickly or easily. So you want to wear synthetics or wool um, so that those will dry much quicker. They're not going to be as heavy when you either get rained on or you're perspiring and it gets all sweaty. For sleeping, as I'd mentioned, I'm always freezing. So I've got multiple layers for sleeping. I have both um, underlayer, um, just kind of like thermal pants, and then a pair of fleece pants. Two pairs of socks. I'm going to start with just the slipper socks. And if my feet are too cold, then I'll put on the tighter pair of socks um, just because I'm not as comfortable wearing these at nighttime. I'm okay with the slipper socks, but if I need another layer, I've got this. I've got a, a base layer. It's pretty soft, so I'm going to wear this and then also a sweatshirt um, because I like the hood to put up over my head because wearing a hat at night isn't always comfortable for me. So the hood I can put up and keep my head warm and even kind of get the face in there a little bit uh, to keep me warm while sleeping. So hopefully that combination will keep me warm while sleeping. Who knows? Uh, we didn't camp in a tent. We just slept in our, um, took a nap in our car last time we went. So this will be a new experiment for sleeping. Hopefully I stay warm. And then also the most important part, pair of hiking boots. I, um, these don't look too worn in. I just got them last year, so they haven't been worn too much yet, but I had the older model of these that I bought, ooh, probably like 15 years ago, and they just died <laughs> last summer. So, got some nice sturdy hiking boots. Um, the ankle, the high ankle is really important for me because I can be unsteady on my feet. So this protects my ankle from rolling. If my foot gets a little unsteady, it keeps it all together and I won't snap my ankle on rocks and stuff hiking.
It's 4.53 in the morning. <laughs> We're getting dressed and getting ready to roll out here in the next 10 minutes or so to get started with our hike. Milo is not very happy. It's a little chilly, but I actually got a little bit of sleep, so I had a successful night. And it's still dark out, obviously, so we'll have a beautiful sunrise to see on the hike. Good morning, it is 6.31 a.m. We have been hiking for 0.98 miles. We've been out for a little over an hour uh, doing the climb for a cure. So it is August 15th and uh, we're climbing Mount Sneffels and it looks like it's gonna be a gorgeous day. So can't wait to see uh, the rest of the trail. Yeah. Yeah, I'm recording now. Let's see if we can. All right, we've been hiking for almost five hours now, uh, but we've been doing a lot of climbing, scrambling kind of stuff. So it's been real slow going. So it is break time, it's time for some snacks. So we are stocked up on lots of snacks. Right now I am eating pretzels with peanut butter in them and chocolate covered espresso beans. We started the morning with just plain bagels. Uh, we also have some generic pop tarts that uh, we ate. What else have we been snacking on? I ate an apple and we've got some kind bars and uh, pizza. pizza for when we get to the summit. So that's our treat when we get to the top. Hopefully we're within about a half mile or so. And within the next hour or so we'll be at the top. So it's snack time so that we have enough energy to get up there.
So my pizza tastes so good. <laughs> <laughs> I like salty <laughs> when I am uh, hiking, so it's perfect. All right, hi. <laughs> we have been hiking for nine hours now. <laughs> it is, let's see what time, 3.16 p.m. So uh, the trek down, it's a little rough. It was really slow going, really loose, lots of rocks and stuff that were like broken loose and careening down. We had to be really careful so we didn't kill anybody by knocking those rocks down and running or them ourselves. into them or ourselves. Um, but we're back on a dirt path now. Uh, it took us a little longer than an hour to get to the summit because we got lost. <laughs> it's hard to find your way up to the top. Once you get up there, the path is not really obvious. So we kind of did a little roundabout way, but we made it up safely. I've made it down safely. I've seen tons of animals. Saw a fox. We saw a marmot. We saw my elf fall off of a rock. We saw pika. We saw ptarmigans. We saw a chipmunk. We've seen other birds. There were ravens flying below us at the summit. Uh, so we'll see if we see anything else out here and uh, see how long it takes us to get out of here. We're still, we still have plenty of food, plenty of water, so we're not in danger of hunger, starvation. We're on the trail. We know how to get back. So it's just been slow going, but we've been having fun. The weather's been gorgeous and nice. So that has definitely been on our side. So successful hike so far. <laughs> to the car. It's 5.04 p.m. Mm -hmm. It took us 10 hours and 48 minutes. <laughs> it was a long and grueling day, but you know what else is grueling? Colorectal cancer. So this is for all my friends out there still fighting it. I've got you. Hopefully one day we can get a cure and get you guys cured. Hi guys, I am here, I'm messy, don't care, because I'm just here to give you a recap on how the climb went. So it's now Monday, I went for a jog to kind of shake everything off. Um, I'm really sore all over still. My calves are sore, my quads are sore. Even um, like in here, the hip flexors, those are sore. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, my butt, of course is sore um a little, a little bit of soreness in the shoulders but that could be from carrying the backpack um otherwise though it's not too bad it's not as sore i'm not as sore as i was yesterday 
Oh, uh, it was tiring, grueling, but I love doing it every year because it gives me the opportunity to really like push my body and see what it's still capable of. Um, cancer, it kind of robbed me of my athleticism for a while there. Um, I couldn't get out and do the activities that I love. So getting out and doing this is kind of a big middle finger to cancer that it may have broken me, but um, I'm still here. So I mentioned we got back to our tent at about five o'clock. So we got back to the tent. We were pretty tired and we needed to pack up our stuff and head back home, which was about a six hour drive. So John and I knew we were not gonna make it, at least not in the state that we were in. It, Pretty much, we were so like loopy from the hike, it would have been like driving drunk. So we took a nap, we just took like a 15 minute nap because it was already gonna be like midnight when we got home. So we didn't wanna wait sleep for too long because we wanted to sleep in our own bed. So we took that 15 minute nap, power nap we'll call it, and we felt pretty okay after that. Um, we drove into the town of Montrose, which was about an hour from our campsite. So when we got there, we kind of recharged there. Um, I had a gift card from my parents for Starbucks that I got for my birthday. So we used that. Um, John got a huge tea so that he could hydrate. We got my little frappuccino as a little treat for making it on this climb because this was definitely her toughest hike ever. And then I got myself um, a coffee with two shots of espresso in it. Even though it was like 6.30, I knew I was gonna need that to help me stay awake for the ride home. So we got caffeine and beverages. We stopped at Taco Bell in the drive-thru and got some food for dinner because we didn't bring any food for dinner. We kind of thought we were gonna be back home by then. So we went through the drive-thru, got some food, and then just ate it in the parking lot and gassed up our car and continued uh, the drive home. So soon after that, it was dark, so I don't really have much footage of driving home because um, I don't have night vision on my camera. We got home, it was a little after 1 a.m. when we pulled in. We didn't unpack anything from the car except for anything that needed to go back to the refrigerator. We came in, we showered, of course, because we were disgusting from hiking for 11 hours. And then we went to bed. So I was so exhausted. I slept until 11 o'clock in the morning the next day. What, or that day, technically, because it was already 1 a.m. So I guess it was really only like nine and a half to 10 hours that I slept, but I haven't slept until 11 o'clock in a long time. I forget to mention a couple things in my recap. So first up, if you're really interested in participating in the Climb for a Cure next year, make sure that you're following me on Instagram and or on Twitter. You can find me as colorado.jelena on Instagram or over on Twitter, I am survivor underscore Jelena. And the links for both of those are in the description below, so you can just click on those and you don't have to worry about typing in anything. The plan is for the climb to happen in Lake Tahoe sometime in mid-August, and there'll be hike options for all skill and fitness levels. The second thing I wanna mention is I'm gonna start experimenting with doing some live videos here on YouTube on the weeks that I'm not publishing a video. It'll be an opportunity for all of you to join me in discussing important topics that affect us as cancer survivors and caregivers. And it'll also be an opportunity for you to join in and be a part of this amazing community that's forming around this channel. I'm trying to decide which day and time are best. So I'd really appreciate it if you could drop me a line down below in the comments and let me know if Thursday or Saturday would be better days for you. And then also what time you would like um, and make sure you know what time zone that you're in. I already kind of have an idea of what times might be good based on my analytics, but I'd love to hear from you guys as to what time you would really like to interact with me. I hope that you enjoyed coming with me for the Climb for a Cure. A quick reminder, make sure that you've clicked on the like button down here to let me know you've enjoyed this video and make sure that you've clicked on the subscribe button if you haven't already and make sure you've clicked on the bell so that you'll get on the notifications when my new videos are posted. Thank you so much for watching.